So in this video, I'm going to be talking about different ways that you can center your stock in your vise in Fusion using joints and constrained components. So let's take a look. So in this video, I'm going to show a couple different methods on how you can center your stock in different vices. Let's start by loading up a vise out of the cam samples section of Fusion. So I'll go into cam samples, work holding, lang, I'll go into macro grip, and then I'll do this 48, 205, 125. I'm going to verify um, I'm going to be in inches and you'll notice that this vise already has some joints created so it has some sliding joints it also has some joint origins already created and we're going to talk about these here in just a moment so now I want to create my stock so I'm going to start by creating a new component I'll just call it stock and I'm going to use the box primitive to define my stock. So I'll probably click this top plane and I'll draw the size of the stock that I want. So in this case, I want it to be uh, six inches long by um, three inches wide by, let's just make it two inches tall. So that's just going to be our stock. We can see that as a new component. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the vise and show a couple different methods on how you could position this stock. So the first method is to use the joint command and to use these existing joint origins. So if I say joint, which component, which is the one I want to move? Well, that's going to be the stock. And where do I want to move it to? So I'm just going to hover over the bottom of my stock and you'll see this joint origin icon. And if I get near the center of this edge, you can see how it's snapping to that point. So I'll just click on that point there. And then I'm going to pick the exact same point over here. So you can see there's that joint origin that's already created along that line. So I just have to hover over and click on that joint origin and you'll see that it brings that stock over there and it lines up those two points. I'll go ahead and say OK and then do the same thing. I'll say joint. I'll pick this bottom edge and this joint origin right here and you'll see how it slides over but as soon as I say OK watch what happens to these jaws. They close because this one has to be connected to this edge and this one has to be connected to this edge and it's perfectly centered because we lined up the the center edge of the stock with the centered edge of the vice jaw so that's one of the ways to position your stock to be perfectly centered in the vice jaws i'll go ahead and undo that and let's pretend that the jaws did not have these. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and turn those off under object visibility. I'll turn off joint origins and I might even turn off the joints just to kind of keep things clean. So the other method is to use the new constrain components option. So I'll click on constrain components and here we basically build Constraint. So I'm going to say I want the bottom face of my stock to sit on this face of the jaw. And you can see how it moved the stock and those faces are now lined up. And we're in this constrained components dialog. Well now I want to add in another constraint. So I'm going to say add constraint. And now I want to say I want that face to touch this face. And now we can see that it's sitting flat on that face there and it's touching that face of the jaw right there. I'll go ahead and add in another constraint and I'll say I want this face to touch this face. And now you can see that those jaws move together and it's sitting on those jaws, but it's not centered. 
So we're going to add in one more constraint, and there's a new option in constrained components called center. So I'm going to select that, and now I can pick that face, and that face should be centered, and I could pick any faces, but I'm going to go ahead and pick that face and that face, and you can see how the block centered itself within those faces. And if we look at our constraints, you can see the three face-to-face -face constraints, and if I scroll down, then we have that center constraint. So there's actually four constraints that kind of define this. And if I say, okay, this block is now fully constrained. I'm trying to click and drag on it, and it can't move. So it's almost like you're placing it in the vise. You can literally think of it as in like I'm setting that face down on the jaw, then I'm pushing it up against, you know, this, this face here. Then I'm closing the vise until it's, you know, touching this face here. And then we're also, we have it centered between those um, side faces of the jaw. Okay, let's take a look at another example. I'm going to insert in a different vise. So I'll go back to work holding. I'll go into Lang, but this time I'm going to go into this Profilo and I'll do this 150, 125 vice. And you'll notice this one doesn't have any step down. And so in this example, we want to add in um, some parallels and then have the stock sitting on those parallels. Once again, I'll go ahead and turn off the uh, origins, so the joint origins. Make sure my units are in inch. And then I want to create a, a couple parallels. So I'll start by creating a new component and I'll just call it parallel. I'll use the box primitive once again and maybe do it on like this um, side face here. Um, I'll revert the position for now and just draw my parallel the size that I want. So in this case, I want to create it to be six inches wide. We'll do uh, two inches tall and 0.125 for the thickness for the parallel. I'll go ahead and open the vise and then I want to place this into the correct location. So once again, I'm going to use the constrain components. I'll start by selecting the bottom face and then having it sitting on the vise like so. Then I'll add another constraint and say I want that face to touch that face there. And then I'll add in another constraint, but this time I want it to be centered. So I'll say that face and this face here. I want to be centered with that face and that face. And you can see how it's positioned the parallel. If I say OK and I drag that jaw, you can see the parallel is moving with it. Now I want to put one on the other side. So I'm just going to right click on parallel and say move copy. I'll say create a copy and I'll just drag it to the right just a little bit. And I need to constrain it to the other jaw. So I'll go ahead and say that face to that face. And you'll notice how it lifted it up a little bit. So I'll constrain that face to that face there. And then finally, I will do the center. I'll click that face. Now here's a neat little trick. Instead of having to rotate around, I'm going to just click and hold my left mouse button for about a second and it'll allow me to probe through so I can there's the front face and then there's that back face so I can select both those faces same thing here I can click that front face click and hold and grab that back face and now we've selected both the front and the back the front and the back of both of those components without having to rotate all the way around I'll go ahead and say OK and we now have those two parallels and they're stuck to the jaws. Now I want to bring in my stock. 
So I'll go ahead and insert in my stock. So I already have a six by three by two stock. I'll just right click and uh, import, or I'm sorry, insert into my current design. And we'll use the constrained components. You can see how fast and powerful this is. So bottom face to this face here, like so. Add a new constraint, that face to that face. Add a new constraint, that face to this face here. And you can see how the jaws move together and it's sitting on top of the parallels. And then the last thing to do is to do this center constraint. I'll say that face and the back face with, and I could do it on the parallels or I could do it on the jaw, it doesn't really matter. I'll do the parallel, I'll do that face. I'll go ahead and rotate around and pick that face. And we can see that that stock is now sitting on top of the parallels and it won't move. Now, what if you're using a vise that doesn't automatically have the um, sliding joints and all that kind of stuff? So for example, I want to bring in an orange vise off of a web page. So I'm gonna go to orangevice.com so I'll pick on the vice that I want, this uh, delta vice, this uh, self-centering delta vice. I'll go ahead and click on that. And we can see um, all the information about it. If I scroll down, you can see that they actually have solid models of this vice in the different lengths. And it says parasolid. Well, Fusion can bring in parasolid. So I'll go ahead and download that parasolid. I'll jump back into Fusion. And let's go ahead and open that Parasolid file. Now it does take a couple moments uh, for the Parasolid file to open, but once it's complete, there'll be a dialog that appears in the upper right corner. Okay, so there we go. I'll go ahead and open this. Now we can see that it's kind of oriented a little bit funky, so I like to move it to make more sense. I'll make sure my move objects are components. I'll set my pivot to something that makes a little bit more sense and just rotate that 90 degrees that direction and maybe uh, 90 degrees that direction. And I'll capture the position. Now these are um, individual components. They have no relationships right now so we want to build some of those relationships so under assemble i'm going to say rigid group and i'm going to group that component and that component together i'll repeat my last command and and group that component and that component together so now we can kind of see these are assembled together then I can come in and use the as built joint. Since these are already located where they need to be, I can say as built joint, and by default it's set to rigid. So if I click on that component, and for example the base, then I can come in here and set this to slider and just pick a line, like for example this line here, and it will slide that component along that edge. And we've now built a slider joint. Now you'll notice the whole thing moves. So I need to pin this particular component, which is this one here. So I'm going to right click and say pin. Now if I grab this, we can see that that moves as a slider joint. I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll say as built joint, that component and that component. Let's just slide it along that edge there. Now that slides along, and I want to make it so if I move one, the other one moves. So under the Assemble menu, there's a command called Motion Link. And I can link together both of the slider joints, and you can see how if one moves, the other one moves. Well, they, I want them to move kind of like opposite of each other, so I'm going to click on this Reverse, 
And now that kind of makes sense. So I'm gonna say, okay, and now if we move one, the other one moves in relationship to it. So we just built the intelligence into this vice that we downloaded off of you know, the orange vice webpage to make it work like the other vices that we've already been uh, working with in this video. Then it's just basically the exact same thing. If I want to insert in my parallel, I can just insert that into this design. We'll use the constrained components. Select that bottom face, select that face there. Add in a constraint, that face to that face. Add in another constraint. And let's just do center that back face there. And then I can pick that front face and that back face there. And we've just centered that parallel. I'll do the same thing. I'll come in here and just do a quick move copy. Create a copy of it. Slide that over. And build in the constraint relationships real quick. So the next thing I want to do is bring in my stock. So I'll go ahead and insert in my stock into the design. Let's position that really quick. Onto the parallels, like that. Add in another constraint. I'll say that face with that face there. Add in another constraint, that face with that face, and then once again, the center constraints with, I could do the parallels or I could do the, the vice faces. And so we can see how those are perfectly lined up. Now what's neat about this is maybe my parallels are a little bit too short. Well, you can tell that they're inserted in by these chain links. So I'm gonna do an edit in place. So if I click on edit in place, we can see that we used the box primitive to create these parallels. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit that feature and let's change the width of these from one to 1 1.5, say okay, and you'll see that both of those updated. I'll finish my edit in place and you can see that my stock updated also because it has to stay on top of those parallels. So this is how you can use different commands such as the joint command or the constrain components command to center your stock on different vices inside of Fusion. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. If you need help learning Fusion, visit my webpage at cadedllc.com. And as always, have fun learning Fusion.